This is the first video lecture on the topic of development during middle age or during middle life. That would be my age group. That's So that's after we've gotten past the early adulthood. So around your, um, well, this is what really what I wanna talk about in this lecture is how we define middle age as a social construct. So the whole notion, the whole idea, you know, the way the term, implies that this is somehow between halfway through your life. So that would be influenced then by the life expectancy of a people. So if 40 is halfway through your life, then the, then the life expectancy would be 80, right? Same thing is, and what's, and as our life expectancy is now, I think mine's like 76 based on the cohort, this is past my middle life. So it's not um, a precise definition as we've seen in all of these chapters that exactly defining what um, how, what age, how many days, how many years you've been alive is not a good way to conceptualize it. Um, but in the, all the different books that I've used, middle age um, is thought goes anywhere between 40 and 65. So it's a it's a generation, right? It's a couple about 25 years in there. Um, and how we feel about middle age is also sort of a social construct. You know, you may have heard this idea of a midlife crisis. And the same way that that adolescent crisis or that adolescent rebellion is not, you know, is not a cultural universal, doesn't exist, doesn't happen for all people, this middle life crisis doesn't either. But, it does, but there are some predictors as to how people are going to feel about turning 40 or turning 50 or being so I'm 48 right I am right in that middle in that midlife and some of the things that influence how you feel about it are going to be your social class how many how much resources you have um, what your and, and the, the crisis is about getting to this point in your life and saying oh my gosh this is not where I thought I would be I thought by now I would have been uh, you know a tenured faculty member and I would have traveled to six different countries and so that your your sense that so according to your textbook the things that influence how you feel about this stage one of them is going to be your health do you feel like you're um, do you still are you still physically able to do the things you used to enjoy how well are you aging which we've talked about when we were talking about stress right how well you coped that's also influenced by social class have you if you've been able to of course have you been able to accomplish the things that you thought you were going to accomplish. That's also influenced by social class. I mean, imagine you wanted to, you know, to go to graduate school when you were 20, 25, and you didn't have the resources. So you decided to go to work and you never had the resources and 25 years later, you still haven't accomplished it, right? So there are, um, you know, there are things that uh, play into how you're gonna deal with this particular stage in your life. It is interesting, um, because I would guess this would be about where your parents are. Your parents would all sort of be midlife. What you do, what says what you do during midlife is going to be influenced by are you in the middle of your career? Maybe you've started your career over. Maybe it never took off. Um, maybe you ended up becoming something completely different. Um, maybe you've just ended a marriage. Um, you're, you know, at this point, your 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 partners might be dying. Uh, so there's lots of things that we don't. You know, when you're when you're at a younger stage in your life, you're influenced. You have this you have this life plan, and so by the time you get to your 40s or your 50s, your plan is you have. You know, some of my peers like to say that they now have more years behind them than they have ahead of them, and that can be very depressing, especially if you have not accomplished things that you had planned on accomplished or if you are in not aging very well, you're in bad health, right? Um, yeah, so anyway, so, so it's, all, it's all a social construct and there are many variables that will influence how you feel about when you get to this point. But a point that I do wanna make that I don't know is actually included in this chapter is the decisions that you make during young, during early adulthood, your health decisions, your educational choices, um, your choices to enter into a marriage, those choices are influencing what how your midlife is going to be that when we are younger we may be partaking in in things um in risky behaviors that we will pay a very high price for when we get to our 40s so take care of yourself now 
so that when you become old, um, you're, you're not, a, don't feel as old as you could potentially feel. I remember reading, okay, I remember reading an article about a woman who said that she started using um, moisturizing cream, anti-wrinkle cream when she was in her 20s. And as soon as I read that, I started using anti-wrinkle cream too, because once they're there, they're there. Okay, moving on. Um, the next chapter, the next slide talks about some physical changes, and I'm not really going to bore you with all of these. You can read these if you want to, but there are a couple things that you may have already noticed. Right, the one some of them include that that happen in this stage of life. Of course, your vision begins to deteriorate, and and it's about the fifth decade. So your fifth decade would be after age forty, and there's a very rapid decline in your vision that happens during that decade. You may never have needed glasses before, and then when you get to your forties, you all of a sudden you need to wear them all the time. Um, another one is your your hair, right? So for a lot of people, their their hair isn't replaced, isn't growing in as faster, and they lose pigment. So a lot of folks become gray in their 40s. Uh, what I think is is interesting about now is they say three weeks from now we'll see everybody's natural hair color. I started to turn gray in my 20s, actually. Um, and remember when we were talking about X and Y chromosome. For men, the male pattern bald, baldness is actually trans. Um, is passed down on their mother's X, right? So, so baldness is on your X. You want to look at your mother's father to see what his hair happens to look like. That will predict what, uh, what your odds are. Uh, and women can lose their hair too, obviously, but um, anyway, okay, so what are some of the others? Reaction time begins to decrease. You're, you're less able to filter out all the distractions. So for middle-aged people, Zoom meetings may be a little bit more frustrating. For younger people, they can still multitask much faster. Middle-aged people, it becomes a little bit harder. Uh, they may not be as good, you know, their, their reaction time is, is not as good. But if you think about when we're talking about experiential learning, they are actually better drivers. They've had fewer, they have fewer accidents than 20-year-olds. 20-year-olds may have May be better, maybe better responding on the highway, but they have don't have as much practice, right? And there's also, and I, I was reluctant to acknowledge this, uh, but there is age discrimination in the marketplace. Uh, the notion that older workers are not as good workers or not going to stay around as long, but the research on that simply says that that's not true. That in fact, older workers may be a little slower to pick up on new things. They may not be as, especially, you know, some of the technology stuff, but they actually are quite reliable workers. They're less likely to have, um, they're less likely to have sick days. They're less likely to no call, no show. So it's an, it's an unfortunate stereotype. It's an unfortunate bias. Moving on to the next one, the next couple boxes are also about some of the physical changes. This one specifically refers to the reproductive systems, right? So sex is one of these things that you don't want to talk, you don't want to think about your parents having sex, but they did and they may still. And in fact, if they want to maintain a healthy sex life, they need to be having sex because these are systems that rely on blood flow. And it's sort of like your heart, you know, the more blood you, you know, the more uh, physically you exert your heart, the healthier your heart, the healthier your heart is. Right, the same, that's the same thing with your, with your sexual organs, that they rely on blood flow. And so the saying is, use it or lose it. Those systems can atrophy and uh, become, and so particularly for women, when women enter menopause, I think this is a quiz question, when is menopause said to have happened? And menopause is when a woman has not had her period for 12 consecutive months. And this is thought to be, can be a very long time. Perimenopause, and some women begin to experience menopause in their 30s, in their late 20s, and their early 30s. This is like menopause, so you may be, you may develop some of the symptoms of menopause, but it is said to, it's, it's a process that does, isn't complete until she has gone for 12 months. So a woman may go for six months, or eight months, or 10 months, and then she may have a period, and she, then you got it's she's still in the process right because it has to be 12 consecutive months at the same time that a woman's 
sexual um, and her reproductive system is beginning to change, right? She's, I like to sort of th imagine that she has a certain amount of eggs and eventually she uses them all up, right? But at the same time, her system is not as, um, um, is not as efficient or not as active as it once was. The same thing is happening for men. The, the women's estrogen has dropped, has beginning to drop. That's actually what causes hot, hot flashes. Hot flashes is associated with declines in her estrogen and that she's less able to regulate her, her bodily temperature. But he's, he doesn't have as much testosterone. He's not producing as much testosterone. So this may affect or will affect his uh, sexual performance as well, his ability to um, achieve and maintain an erection. Um, you know, I think I said early in the beginning of this semester is that when we are born, we're born with fairly, um, our, our male and female sex hormones are more similar. And then we hit puberty and we kind of go like this, that men become masculinized, men's bodies and men's sexual reproduction systems hers become feminized for the purpose of you know making babies and then we re we go through middle age we go through young adulthood like this we're very different but when we start to get to middle age 40 and 60 we become more the same so as women lose some of their estrogen she may get facial hair uh, her voice may get deeper because and men are doing the opposite. Men may not be producing as much facial hair. Their voices may get higher. They may grow, you know, a little breath. So she's going to become less feminine and he's going to become less masculine. And all of these things have to begin to happen. But it makes complete sense, right? Because if you're done making babies, um, you know, okay. So moving on to the next slide, what's this one next to talk about? Say, uh, it talks about heart disease stress we've already talked about a lot of these things um it is during this stage of life that for that uh from infancy right now illness is more likely to take our life during middle age where during adolescence and young adulthood it was accidents but at this point we're now it's illness and you know in this time of the of the covid stuff there is a lot of concern for middle-aged and older people because their bodies are just not as um, resilient, right? Not as resilient as they once were. And so this is the period of life where you might be asked to take, do your first mammograms. You might be asked to do your first colonoscopies, uh, your first prostate exams, all of that fun stuff starts to happen during your middle age. And I think um, uh, oh, heart disease, high blood pressure, all of those things start to show up. Uh, during your middle age, during your 40s and your 50s, right? Um, I think this is where I want to, oh, one final thing is that anyone know what the number one cause of death to women in their 40s is? Drum roll, please. It is heart disease, heart disease. And this is partly because that most of the research on heart disease has focused on the symptoms in women and not, I mean, excuse me, the symptoms in men and the symptoms in women are not the same. So there's been some you know, public campaigning to draw attention to the heart disease in women. I think I'm gonna stop this video right here. And when we come back, I wanna talk about cognitive development, memory, and maybe get to some personality development.